New Hall Gaming. Game. Survive. Win. What is up, the YouTube, and welcome back to another episode and game for a flavour of life that is diplomacy is not an option. I really fancied having a go on something like this. Uh, there are billions, I think, is another option as well, but I've tried playing that and I could never quite get into it. This one, uh, so far, so good. I'm enjoying it. I like the graphics, I like the gameplay, and it's just a different bit of flavour for the channel for now. The videos that are on there, of course, are going to continue as always. Uh, having a few issues with the Minecraft ones with some rubber banding in the recording. I'm trying to solve that. And then, of course, the oxygen not included and the universe sim are basically based on the likes and the views and you guys letting me know. This game is very similar. It is sort of a, not a tower defense game, but it is a wave defense game. So we're going on one of the easier options that I haven't played this yet other than the tutorial. So this will be the first time playing it properly. Uh, I would like to push it and go into what I've seen on the screenshots, which is super hard mode where there is enormous, ridiculous waves of enemies coming in and you have to fight them off. Basically, you've got a town center castle that you start with, uh, three levels of the castle that you can level through, uh, and then you have to build the various buildings around it to, uh, in order to, 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 to progress. Resources, of course, are required. So you need your wood, your stone, and your iron. You also need food, and food is used daily uh, for your citizens and your military. Now, the cool thing about it as well is the way it's set up is that you do build defenses, so you build walls and towers, and you can arm them with archers and various different defensive units so immediately starting in with a castle and a lighthouse that's showing some land over there i don't believe that's got any relevance to us and playing through it so far i'm pretty sure it hasn't you can't click on it or anything it's just showing a bit of the land there it looks like the enemies for this map are kind of doom so nightmare mobs uh, there is our castle now it did say in the tutorial when you put buildings down to try and leave one block gap between them at all times so that your units can get to them uh, i am following that to a point but obviously like the same buildings like the houses and stuff i will connect together but there will be always a square gap around first things first and that is the wood so we'll get a few of the foresters down they will indeed uh, cut down those trees and give us the wood uh, a bit later on then we need to walk to work towards the stone and then the iron now as far as i'm aware other resources are available, so we'll let, I'll quickly explain them now. Across the top, looking in from the left-hand side, you have your population, left number, your population, right number, your allowed population. Below that population growth is how many new people you get per day. Now, of course, if you're at your cap, that number, although will show a number, will not actually happen. Next to that, the blue little figurine there shows how many free workers you've got, free villagers, which means you can build buildings. Every building requires an amount of people. So instead of putting a building down and then workers go to that building, when you build it, they are already assigned. So that is your workers. The next one is your food. And you can see there you have the amount of food, which is the brown line. The red line is how much is being consumed yesterday. Also underneath, you can see it's showing food consuming is 20 food per day. There you then have wood, stone, and iron, all in the same bar. That is your total storage allocation. Currently, that is only my castle. From playing through the game, there will, of course, build storage facilities. That bar will fill up. The wood is obviously like that dark brown, even reddish color. The, wood, the stone is that white limestone color, and the iron, of course, is gray colored. So you will see different color bars appear on there as you go. Second to last there is green gems. Those are soul gems, I believe they're called. And they are for casting spells. There are four spells we can cast in this game that we'll come to later on. But in order of unlock, the first one is you spawn some melee military for a short amount of time. The second one is some sort of laser beam that just obliterates everything in its path and is controlled by your mouse. The third is a mass heal. And the final fourth spell you can do is a meteor strike. Lastly on the bar at the top there you can see a gold coin and a gold bar that is literally what it says on the tin That is gold coins and they are used for making very OP units and end game building upgrades and changes The only way to get coins that, that I'm aware of at the minute is to build a market Which again is sort of castle level 3 area 
and in that market you sell resources so you can sell your food wood iron or stone and that is returned for gold coins now of course at the time of you watching this video it's likely that you'll already see uh, how it's going to be played out i don't know yet how short i can get these i don't want to sort of miss out on a lot of the gameplay and me fumbling through it for the first time if i'm honest um so likely this episode will be longer than normal or actually it'll probably be multiple episodes per battle let me know your thoughts if you want if you like watching this video and like this game and you want to see me playing it what would you rather me do one video that is the entirety of it uh, cut down or uh, sort of two or three episodes per per level per fight i mean endless is what i'm playing at the minute so the only way this ends is when i die i don't know when that's going to be uh, in real in real life obviously i've played at least two hours ish into this one already so uh, and i'm not quite there yet there is no way to complete it so for an endless one what are your thoughts um i can do the other sandbox ones and they're obvious i'll do sort of one campaign or one level per episode that's fine but for for the endless you just have to let me know what your preference is to watch it for now though i am likely going to do this over a couple of episodes just to give everybody the chance to see exactly what is happening and how i'm doing things so the stone mines you can only place on those areas there that you can see on the side of the mountains where there is that limestone looking stuff and it is not infinite so be warned the stone that's then the mountains are nothing other than a barrier the orange colored stone looking stuff that's on the mountain is your iron ore that you will get at a later date again also not infinite there are infinite stone and infinite iron sources but they look different and they are used uh, they are collected with different buildings what you saw me chucking down there was some watchtowers you can put people in all of the towers uh, to defend them but for the watchtowers i don't use them for that although you can put one person in them i use them for just uncovering the map and give me a better idea of what is around me because from the tutorial what i realized is food is the most difficult thing for me in this game anyway having enough food and then having an army that is relevant was very difficult so to accomplish enough food i found that i needed a lot of like farms uh, or berry pickers or fishermen which are the three ways of getting food and to do so you need a lot of land especially for the farms they are huge so uh, previously i built in the tutorial like a, a small base like this and then i chucked a wall around it to protect it that's not enough at all you can see over there on the left hand side where the lighthouse is uncovering the land all of that land there through to where our castle is we're going to need all of that right at the beginning so get a small group of soldiers you start with them so it shouldn't be too difficult and a catapult which is great for starting the fights because usually it can take out three four five at any one time and then sort of spread out from there and uncover some land so you've got somewhere to extend to your villagers are totally defenseless if they get or go anywhere near the enemy they will be killed so you need to send your military in to clear out these areas before you start to expand. Now down here you can actually see I'm keeping an eye because that is a villager heading towards that iron mine. And no it's not, it is a stone mine. Uh, and I want to make sure that they're safe. So you can see I've brought down, because they're not safe, you can see some enemies coming in there. So I've brought down my military and they're going to deal with those for me making sure that the aggro is not pulled on the villagers and therefore they should survive as soon as they've got the building up and running that will start to produce the resource but they do have to physically carry it back and forth from that building to our storage which means this entire path will need to be totally safe permanently or we're just wasting villagers lastly villagers that die and military that die of your faction of your uh, reign will need to be dealt with correctly i.e buried by grave diggers in a cemetery they will rot and cause infection and make your people sick should you leave them there all of the enemy horde that come in whether they be nightmares zombies or just enemy people they despawn so don't worry about those it's just your people you need to worry about another watchtower comes up and as soon as that loads you can see there huge amount of area uncovered there excellent for starting cheap as well doesn't use much wood so i would suggest you go in there you can see there there are carts all over the place 
that give you free resources, anywhere from sort of 10 to 40 resources. So far, I have seen wood, stone, iron, and food in those. So just over here on the left-hand side, you can see we've uncovered a... Well, I don't know what you want to call that. It is a nest. It's a hive, a nest. Those will constantly reproduce the enemies as you go. So if you're going to push into them, make sure to take out the nest as well. The enemies do have similar uh, stuff to you as well. They will have catapults. They can have catapults. Even these nightmare guys have a catapult option. They also have uh, necromancers that can bring your enemies and their enemies back to life to fight with them. So make sure to take it slowly when you're expanding, making sure that the areas are clear. If there is a nest to get rid of it, then you can expand into that area. For us at the minute now, you can see in the storage at the top, the bar is pretty much full. We have 384 wood and 1616 stone. But we are getting a slow increase in the enemies attacking some of our buildings. And that is warranted. That one there that's nearly down is a berry picker. On the bottom right, I uh, forgot to mention this at the beginning. It's quite important. It is in the tutorial though. Where you can see the hammers crossed, that is your repair button. Uh, next to it, you can see where there's a smaller version and a number two on it. That is your auto repair. It's not automatic when you start the game, you have to do it. Right clicking on that will activate it, right clicking will deactivate it. That means that your builders will automatically repair all and every building that requires it. If that is turned off, they will not. The number shows how many buildings are currently waiting in the queue to be repaired. And you can see now it's down to one. So that means that it's that building up there on the right, which is the one that was just attacked, the berry picker. One thing I have noticed about the catapult, if you use it in a populated area of trees, it's a bit annoying. It will wipe out the trees. It doesn't ignore the environment, though there is no friendly fire. So it won't hurt your own people, but it will wipe out the trees. So if you've got a forestry happening in a nice big forest that you're hoping to rip down, pay attention to <laughs> where you're fighting and you don't want to wipe out your trees with all your catapults. Continuing to push forward now on the south part of the base, which technically, according to the minimap, is uh, well, east, but anyway, so yeah, east. Uh, down is what I'm looking at. You can see there's a lot of enemy doom creature things there, so I'm just pushing a little bit of an army down. Again, with the catapult, uh, we started with crossbowmen, which are actually endgame bowmen, which are quite good, so it's important to keep an eye on those. Trying to get some cool views, but you can't actually see far enough into the distance. So it didn't really work as well as expected. I hoped that the catapult would be in range, but you can see it's not firing. So that means it's not close enough. So we'll try again. All we're doing here is pushing forward to make sure that we have plenty of food. Down there in the trees, you can see that we're just heading directly towards. There are a lot of berry bushes in that forest. And you saw it wipe out a load of trees there. It's not the most accurate thing in the world. Uh, as you see, and that's two fires, two misses, 100% miss rate. Still three three fires, 100% miss. Four fires, 100% miss. Five, and so on. So they're not very accurate. There is a lot of research to do. We'll look at that shortly. But really all I'm doing now is making some space. As soon as you attack them, of course, you aggro the entire group to a point. Uh, the catapult's good at taking out a large number at once if, if it hits. And again, remember that it will not hurt your own people because that would have flattened them if it did. With the stock of everything full, I'm going to put down more storage. We can see 431, 45 uh, of the... I've got plenty of wood coming in, just struggling for stone at the minute. And really, stone is required for that second level. So the second tier of, of buildings is wood. And the third tier is iron and or gold coins. I'm just going to turn down the radius there to stop them from getting those bushes. Because if the guys go over to pick from those bushes, they will be killed. Now I'm going to put another one down there. There are so many berry bushes around here that I'm going to bring three in. And as you can see, we're just going to go and push even further. It's always a good idea to have some melee with your bowmen, although the bowmen are doing most of the damage. They are very, very squishy and will be annihilated should you leave them. 
Now, bottom left-hand corner, you can see wave one is on its way. You can see where it's coming from and how long until it actually spawns on the map. At that point, we then need to be ready for it. Now, one thing I have noticed, and I've not got used to it yet because I'm not used to the maps, it's coming from that area, but I don't know exactly where it will be. And it's impertinent, or it's pertinent, because... Of course, you want to know where to put all of your units. It's all good having a wall going around the entire base and having bowmen on that wall. But only some of them will be able to reach wherever the horde comes in. And the horde will come in in one big lump. It won't come in in a big wide wave. So you really want everything to be kind of all together. Especially your catapults. We can build some towers and we will do some defensive towers that you can put your guys on as well. And the larger towers you can even put your catapults and upgraded things like ballistas etc on too. Which give them a massive increase in range. With 15 seconds left on that timer I'm making sure that we've got a wall up in that direction. Of course the timer hitting zero they still have to walk to us. This map isn't small. Um, so they do have to walk across the map to get to us so there will be a bit of time so now it's hit zero they've of course on the map now and they're making their way to us but we do have quite a bit of time before they actually get here looking then at the bottom left you can see wave two is triggered the sun looking thing there means it's going to come on day 13 we are on day seven so we already know we're getting another wave on day 13 we yet to have destroyed the wave for wave seven so let's jump ahead to when that wave reaches us and see how bad it is there we go so we are still on day seven but it's dark so it's the night time so it took them pretty much all day to walk here and as you can see they're walking over you can see then they're coming from that slightly to the right so i then send over my melee units to try and intersect the reason being that they will of course attack the wall which is fine to a point but there are minimum ranges for some items as well, more, more specifically the, the catapult. So I want to keep the melee to keep them always within, and you can see I'm checking there, always within that minimum range. Now, that is not the end of the wave. You can still see the thing flashing on the map, so it's not over just yet. But we have now gone into day 8, and you saw we are starving. And this is the, probably the most difficult thing I've found for this game so far. The waves do build quite quickly there's a lot of guys coming in now they look like xenomorphs from alien to me let me know in the comments if you agree i think it's the heads that's doing it they look like hopping xenomorphs the bodies of course are nothing like them it's just the heads or i suppose you could say it's any alien head they are nightmare looking things there are actual bosses uh, that you need to defeat in some of the modes um that you would that come at certain waves that we would have to deal with exciting to do that actually i'm actually really enjoying this game it depends on what you guys do though what views i get etc you guys dictate whether we'll play more of this or less of this or none of this ever again uh, depending on the views and the likes and the comments etc i've just tried to find an area where everybody wants to watch and what i can play um, of course i'm not a fps player so you won't see me playing any fps games so yeah that's just not not, not me uh, I don't mind third person RPGs and stuff like that. In fact, I love that. I spent many decades on World of Warcraft in one of the um, higher end uh, guilds as well I was in. But I digress and that wave is over. So you don't get no, I don't know, yay, congratulations or massive uh, reward from it. It continues. The time continues. We're on day eight. We've got five days left. Rinse and repeat. Now looking at our stats, we've got 60 out of 60 people, so we're capped. So no matter how many uh, much food we've got, but we're, we're obviously capped on people, but we're also struggling on food. So I still need to push out and uncover the area. Now what I want to try and find are walls and um, structures, oceans, something that is a block from the horde. So I know they're not going to come from that direction, or there are no more mobs there. And you can see there is their catapult-ish looking guy. He isn't, though. He's, I believe, a necromancer. Uh, and anybody that dies, he can potentially bring back to life. So we need to come in and make sure we concentrate on them. There is a nest as well that we need to concentrate on. So we can select our range and say, please attack that guy first. 
It is a strange nighttime, daytime transition. It gets really dark for a few seconds. I'm not sure what that's about. It is a little bit annoying, especially for recording, but it's okay. So you can see we took out that first one. There is still another one there, but we're going to take out the nest as well so it doesn't spawn anything else. We can now finally take out the last remaining necromancer boss you can see there on the floor there is a soul gem to collect that is how you get those you collect them by defeating so far enemy buildings i've not really seen them come from mobs yet and i think one just dropped no we've only got six so that's one more that's fine okay so we've wiped them out and they can't come back and you can see there is a bit of water pushing there that is actually an ocean so there is an ocean bound here which is fantastic because then we can build up to that ocean and we're never going to get attacked from the ocean i well i hope um and this way we have an, a good area of space so you can see our base is up there in that top left hand corner all the way over to that right top left no top right hand corner to top left hand corner yes we've got all this space all of these trees in this area the wall is around we can upgrade that we're going to upgrade the storage now because we're still loads of wood coming in which is good because we want to get those watchtowers in we want to get those walls in as a basic item all here you can see there's a lot of stone to collect so now we've cleared that out we can get some more stone mines in as soon as we've got the resources for it and another nest here to push out and destroy shouldn't be too difficult give us plenty of space as well i'm going to chuck in some of the melee guys from our first spell two points each so we've used two there which is four points we now have two of the six left just to speed up this process really they only last for a couple of minutes and then disappear the little blue line you see there is either them despawning or dying it depends and as we are looking at almost time you can see the first way we got out of the way on that whole left hand side there has now been cleared out i'm going to push a little bit up because i want the wall at the top there you can see to hopefully go to something as well and give us all of that room to chuck down a crap ton of fields is what i'm after of course the fields will require level two on the castle but that's not too difficult to do i think it's 500 stone and 300 or so 450 um wood something like that um not too difficult but you can see this army is doing a great job of wiping out everything that i wanted it to We'll collect those three resources you can see there on the right hand side as well. They both look like food to me. If the guys walk into them, they collect them automatically, but you can't ask them to. Yeah, that's a food. And then another one there as well. We're just going to push this up to the coast in the hopes that we wipe out everything, get a wall in, and then we have a nice secluded area that we can reinforce with walls, eventually into stone walls and then into very, very heavy stone walls. Some towers about, not defensive towers, just to make sure that nothing's going to surprise me. Again, I don't know if something can spawn from the water. Um, if you do know the answer to that, please do let me know. And it might be pertinent to me. And actually, I just did miss a step there. I'm upgrading the building, so the log... You can see I can do the level 2 buildings now on the mines as well. So the castle has been upgraded to level 2, which is good. That means we can now upgrade all of the buildings to level 2, as well as the walls to level 2, which are uh, stone. Last tip before I leave you is if you double click on any of the buildings, walls or anything, it will select multiple. You can then click the upgrade button and it will upgrade everything if you have the resources. Of course, if you don't, it won't. And yes, I am eating into the forest there to put houses down. But as you can see, all of this area is now ours. So I am not worried. More watchtowers to make sure that I can see everything. I'm not going into those shadows. I hate that idea. It sounds dangerous. But for now, we are going to leave it here. And you guys, tell me what you want to see. And if you want to see more of this game. I am really enjoying it. So I'm very happy to do a lot more games, uh, videos on it. Also, let me know how you want to see it, especially these endless ones, because they're likely to be either very edited or multiple episodes. You tell me, and I'll make it happen. Thank you very much for watching. If you like the video, please click like. Any comments, welcome. As always, until next time, take care. Goodbye.